1941, a Southern Pacific Cab Forward, number 4193, stalls inside a tunnel near Santa Susana Pass, California. A fire breaks out, five railroaders are killed, and four more are injured. This was not supposed to happen. The cab forward was created to save lives, not take them, and for nearly 50 years, Southern Pacific operated 256 of these machines through the Sierra Nevada. They solved one deadly problem by creating new ones. So how deadly was the cab forward actually? The story begins in 1908 when Southern Pacific deployed two enormous mallet locomotives, numbers 4000 and 4001, on the Roseville to Sparks line over the Sierra Nevada. The route was brutal. 39 tunnels, approximately 40 miles of snowsheds, and steep grades approaching 2.5%. These locomotives produced such a massive volume of exhaust that crews were overwhelmed almost immediately. The concentrated fumes inside tunnels and sheds were so intense that engineers reported difficulty breathing, and the exhaust velocity even blew boards off snowshed roofs. To survive, Crews ran the locomotives backward, tender first, so the smoke stayed behind them. But then they could not see ahead. The tender blocked the line of sight. It was not designed to lead a train, and it created serious operational hazards. Southern Pacific needed a real engineered solution. In 1910, Baldwin Locomotive Works delivered 15 oil-burning articulated locomotives, Class MC2, numbered 4002 through 4016. Southern Pacific ordered all 15 before a single prototype existed, a decision that shows just how desperate the situation had become. These locomotives ran permanently cab first with the firebox at the front and the tender at the rear, requiring oil to be piped the full length of the machine. This was the birth of the key of forward. It solved the smoke problem. Crews sat ahead of the exhaust, visibility was excellent, and they could finally breathe during mountain operations. But it created new vulnerabilities. When the cab forward design first appeared, crews did not want to ride in it. With the cab sitting at the very front of the locomotive, they were the first point of contact in any collision, because there was no boiler or heavy frame protecting them. Management eventually persuaded crews to try the design. After operating the locomotives, many crews came to appreciate the improved visibility and the much cleaner air. But the danger never really went away. In conventional locomotives, tens of thousands of pounds of steel and water absorb collision forces before they reach the cab. In a cab forward, the crew sits ahead of everything. Because the firebox was at the front, oil had to travel the length of the locomotive. Lines ran from the tender along the frame all the way forward, with the tender pressurized at approximately 5 pounds to guarantee flow on grades. Every joint in that line was a potential leak. Any leak placed oil directly on the rails in front of the drivers. Oil on steel equals wheel slip, and on mountain grades, inside tunnels, with heavy trains behind you, that can become catastrophic. Worse yet, leaking oil was a fire hazard, especially in tunnels. In 1941, two separate tunnel fire incidents involved cab forward locomotives. At Cruzat, Oregon, locomotive 4029 suffered a defective oil valve and caught fire inside a tunnel. Most surviving accounts agree at least one crew member was injured, though exact numbers differ between historical summaries. The more severe incident occurred at Hassan Tunnel near Santa Susana Pass, where locomotive 4193 stalled and caught fire inside the tunnel. Five railroaders did not make it out, and four were injured. The confined space, the burning oil, the heat, and the toxic fumes turned the very tunnels that justified the cab forward's existence into deadly traps when things went wrong. In a conventional locomotive, fire stays at the rear and the crew remains separated by the boiler. In a cab forward, the firebox is beside the crew. Southern Pacific crews used AR masks fed from the locomotive's main reservoir through a reduction valve and purifier during the worst tunnels and snowsheds, and these systems helped under routine conditions. But a stalled locomotive with an active fire in a tunnel surpassed what those masks could handle. When a tunnel filled with heat and toxic gases, escape paths were nearly non-existent. Cab forwards also faced the usual hazards of steam locomotion the risk of crown sheet failure, where insufficient water level exposed the upper boiler tubes, could trigger catastrophic boiler explosions.
Historical accident records reference three boiler explosions involving cab forwards at Edison, California in 1914, at Mystic, California in 1920, and at Cooper, California on May 3, 1941. The Cooper explosion was particularly violent, with boiler fragments thrown over 500 feet. Steam locomotive boiler explosions are devastating. Pressurized water flashes into steam and destroys metal structures instantly. In a cab forward, the crew rode beside the boiler rather than behind it. The locomotives included a small platform behind the smoke box called the monkey deck. To inexperienced transients looking for a place to ride through the mountains, it appeared safe. It was not. Contemporary railroad accounts mention incidents of transients being badly burned or overcome by smoke or steam. The monkey deck sat directly in the path of stacked discharge, hot water, soot, and superheated steam. Railroad employees understood the danger, but transients did not, and multiple accounts suggest that some may not have survived those attempts. From 1910 to 1944, Baldwin built 256 cab forwards for Southern Pacific. The earliest used a 2882 wheel arrangement, 12 had a 4662 arrangement, and the vast majority were 4882s. No other North American railroad bought cab forward steam locomotives. Other railroads did not face Southern Pacific's unique combination of tunnels and snow sheds, and they saw the risks, collision vulnerability, complex oil routing, fire hazards, and crew exposure. Southern Pacific did not have the option to avoid them. The Sierra Nevada demanded it. The railroad ran them until 1956, when dieselization made them obsolete. Only one survives today, number 4294, built in March 1944 and preserved in Sacramento. So how deadly was the cab forward actually? At least five men were gone after the Hassan Tunnel fire, with four more injured. At Cruzat, at least one crew member was injured. Boiler explosions at Edison, Mystic, and Cooper added to the toll. On top of that were casualties among transients riding the monkey deck. Yet at the same time, the cab forward undeniably saved lives. Without it, crews on the Roseville to Sparks route would have continued choking on exhaust inside tunnels and snow sheds. The cab forward eliminated that daily hazard. But when things went wrong, when an oil valve failed, when a locomotive stalled in a tunnel, when a fire ignited in a confined space, the crew sat at the front of a machine burning oil and boiling water under pressure with limited escape routes. Oil lines stretching the entire length, the firebox sitting at the extreme front and the cab riding ahead of the boiler, all essential design choices, also created new risks with severe consequences. For 46 years, Southern Pacific accepted those trade-offs. The cab forward was a brilliant solution born from necessity, a machine that protected its crews from one hazard by exposing them to others. It worked flawlessly under normal conditions, until the moment it did not. That is how deadly the cab forward actually was.